Hey everyone, in today's video I'll share how I would study for the math proficiency test. It's a test for teachers in Ontario that they all have to take in order to get their certification. I know many teachers who are currently in teachers college that are stressed about passing this test. Because most teachers are not math teachers like me and many others. But they still have to pass this test and you probably forgot most of what you learned in high school anyways. I did and if it wasn't for tutoring I would have forgot it all. So I thought I could help and without further ado, let's get to it. If you're new here, my name is Olivier and I'm a certified math and physics teacher in Ontario who is currently doing a master's in statistics at Carleton University. Here we're browsing a blog article that I just wrote on how I would study for the math proficiency test. The link and all links will be in the description below, so make sure to check them out if you want to have access to everything we're talking about here. If you want general information on the math proficiency test, you can click the first link. And here you can find all the relevant information that you need for the math proficiency test. Step one, the first thing I would do to study for the MPT would be to do the practice test. If you click this link, again, it's in the description below, you see that we have a button Click here to access the practice test. You click here. It's actually pretty well made. Si tu parles en français, tu cliques sur français. If you speak in English, you uh, click on English. And you can see that this is the no calculator component. We have five questions. So if we begin, then we can try to answer these questions. Let's say it's 15.6. You click it and that's it. So you just go through the whole test and then they'll tell you which, uh, which questions you got right and so on. So that's the first step. This will give you your baseline knowledge. Depending on the results of this, you're going to learn what you don't know, what you forgot. And from there, you can guide your studying. So that leads us into step two, which is get to know the test. You can read the full guidelines by clicking on the link I provided. However, I pointed out the highlights, the things that are relevant that you need to know. So there's 50 math questions in total five without a calculator, 45 with a calculator. The teaching questions, there's 21 of them, and they're based on two documents. They're, I think it's Growing Success and Learning for All. I do recommend reading those. Another thing that's super important to point out is that you don't need 70 or higher to pass the test. You need 70 or higher in each section. So I actually did the math here. It wasn't too hard. You need 35 or more on the math component section because there's 50 questions in total and a 70 out of 21 question is 15 questions or more so if you have at least 35 out of 50 on the first section and at least 15 out of 21 you will get a successful grade and again they give you a couple examples on the website to explain for example one student gets 100 in one section but 60 in the other and they don't pass the test in step one, we learned what we didn't know. In step two, we learned what we needed to know. In step three, you can learn more about what you need to know by explore the list of concepts that are going to be on the test. And that could really be in step two as well. But step three is really to, to study and is to find out the things you're weak at and really explore those concepts and relearn those concepts deeper. So Khan Academy is a great resource for that. I link their videos in almost all my YouTube videos. I also created a playlist that covers every problem of the practice test for the uh, on the ministry website. So make sure to check that out. I'll link to it here in the description. You should see it appear on the screen. So this will target every video, but really it's to those problems are not going to be on the real test. So you might as well learn the concepts well. So now that we've studied and we've targeted the things we're a little bit weaker at and we need extra help, now we can retake the test because we had a baseline and let's say we failed the first time or we passed but barely passed, then we can retake the test and see how we're doing. Here, some people are gonna do just fine. They might get 85, 90 in both sections and you can decide right there to stop studying and maybe you're confident enough that you'll pass the test. However, I think most people will either struggle with the test a little more and will need extra help or will at least be more confident that they'll pass the test on when it comes time to actually write it. From there, let's say you've studied and you're still struggling to nail the practice test. 
Some people will benefit from tutoring. So you can look at hiring a private tutor. You can also ask your colleagues and friends to help you because they'll benefit from helping you because teaching is often a great way to learn. And you can create a group chat. That way you can all help each other. Just remember that the best way to learn math is to do problems. So you actually need to work by yourself here. A great way to do that is to just do a bunch of practice tests. So I actually created another practice test, which is linked here. If we click on it, now this practice test, I just pretty much took the other one and made every question a little bit harder. So that way it'd be like the, the second test that you can practice by yourself to train a little bit harder. So the actual test is a bit easier. So section one is no calculator. I just put questions. You can print the whole thing or I suggest using a pen or something like that or just do it in your notebook and you have every question and then section number two is the with calculator so you have a bunch of questions some of them have drawings multiple choice i thought about doing it in google forms with multiple choice but it would it would take a lot of time especially with pictures like this and so on but all these questions come from me inventing them or like 90 99 percent of them anyways if you have any questions, you can always email me. Another pretty good sample test that you can try is the one found for the grade nine uh, provincial test. If we scroll down to sample test, you have two of them. You have the applied and academic, so you could do both technically, right? And they'll work on different concepts and diff different difficulties as well. So it's pretty similar to the format of the MPT. So that's pretty great as well. Now for the teaching part of the test, I didn't tell you how to study those questions yet, right? I think it's because most teachers are more comfortable with studying those concepts than the math. But I would definitely recommend reading Growing Success and Learning for All. Obviously, you don't need to read all those pages. The uh, evaluation section is very important. And I would say that those are important documents in general because they often show up in interview questions and Honestly, they're just good teaching documents. They match my philosophy pretty well. So I think those are mostly common sense once you have a little bit of math teaching experience. But if you need to memorize some specific things, you can always use flashcards as this is one of the best methods to remember facts. And you can check out Quizlet uh, because, or other, any other tool. I know Anki is pretty good. Some people like that. And Quizlet, you can share your deck of cards. And I think you can in Anki as well. So you can share your decks with your friends so that way everyone can help each other and learn more from it. So that's it for the great master plan. Studying math is really an iterative process. What do I mean by that? Is that you practice, you do problems, and then it points out to you what you don't know. Once you know what you don't know, then you go study, you do more problem, practice problems, you can watch videos, you can do other practice tests, and then it's just a big cycle, you, you practice, and you study and you practice and you study and so on. That, and the cool thing about math is that when you practice, that's also studying. You also learn when you study, right? So I would keep this cycle going until you feel very confident that you'll pass the test. And I think you, have, you can retake the test if you fail, but let's not do that if we don't have to, right? So what I did in my undergrad and in high school is I would study until I was confident that I could get 90 or higher. And most of the time it doesn't take that much for like a test like this, you might have to relearn a lot of content, but odds are that you've already done quite a bit of studying, right? So here you need 70 in each section. If you aim for 90, the odds that you fall all the way down to 70, even including a few curveballs, are pretty low. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one help or group sessions, feel free to reach out to me. I included a Google Forms in the description below. So that way you can uh, shoot me an email, but my email is also in the description. So just shoot me an email if you need help and we'll try to book a group review. And that's it. I wish you the best of luck and thank you for watching. Good luck. The best way to currently support the channel is simply to like this video, hit the subscribe button, and share this video with your friends and colleagues. I'll see you next time, but do the work.